So a lot of black folk are coming at me and saying, why are you reporting on the Russian invasion? This is a white people's war and people only care because the refugees are white. You need to mind your own black business because this isn't our war. What was that? You'd like me to tackle two social issues at once? Yes. Let's. I love shit like this. It's how I keep my Takayuki knife sharp, which is my brain. Mind my own black business, you say? Please, allow me to widen your narrow scope for a moment. Let's talk about wheat! Russia's the largest wheat exporter in the entire world, exporting about $8 billion worth of grain every single year. Ukraine is the fifth largest, exporting about $3 billion worth every year. And it's considered the breadbasket of Europe because 71% of its land is agricultural. And that harvesting land is the size of Italy. Ukraine is also the biggest exporter of seed oils in the world, like safflower and sunflower. Both countries export over 25% of the entire world's wheat. Know where I'm going with this yet? Too early? Let me give you another hand. Russia and Ukraine export their goods from their port cities on the Black Sea. Cities like Kherson, Mykolaiv, and Odessa. Those names sound familiar? They should. The civilians in two of those cities and the cities themselves are currently being invaded, seized, and demolished by Russia, and Odessa is next. War in Ukraine means that its ports close because it's under attack, which means that crops are being damaged and there's a diversion of manpower because everybody's fighting. So nobody's harvesting the grain, which means that we can't leave the country to feed other countries. Need another hint? 95% of Ukraine's grain exports go to Middle Eastern and North Africa. African countries. Still a white war? Tons of countries heavily rely on wheat exports, but Egypt is at the top of the pyramid, no pun intended. Egypt gets almost 85% of its wheat from Ukraine and Russia. Tunisia relies on 50 to 60% of its wheat imports from Ukraine and Russia. Turkey imports around 75% of its wheat from Ukraine and Russia. In 2019, Egypt, Turkey, and Bangladesh bought over half of Russia's entire wheat production. Russia and Ukraine are also major wheat suppliers to Nigeria, Lebanon, Yemen, Sudan. Still a white war? Russia's port cities may not be under military attack, but Russia's money, reputation, and ships are under attack from sanctions. That means that countries don't want to do business with Russia because of what it's doing to Ukraine. Countries are banning Russian ships from entering their ports. Turkey has now blocked passage to Russian fleets through the Black Sea Straits, which they control. And when the flow of grain from the world's largest exporter is disrupted, this has a significant effect on the cost of food. And then food prices rapidly rise, which is occurring right fucking now. If food prices rapidly increase in economically unstable countries, this can lead to people not being able to afford food, and then famines can happen. Everything is connected. Still a white war you shouldn't care about? Now factor in global warming, which is creating endless fires, destroying massive amounts of crops, and creating some of the longest droughts that humanity has ever seen. Then factor in an already disrupted supply chain from a pandemic. Prices for food were already high before this war started. Wheat's at its highest level in 14 years, and corn is at a nine-year high. Morocco is a huge wheat and barley producer, but it's in the middle of a 30-year drought, which means that it needs to increase its wheat imports too. Tunisia is down and out, strapped for cash. Yemen and Sudan are economic depressed. Lebanon has one month of wheat left in its mills and then it's shit out of fucking luck. And Lebanon currently has an 80% poverty rate. Do you think these people can afford food price increases? These countries now have to frantically rush to find alternative countries to buy wheat from that they can already barely afford. And right now there are too many countries to list that are walking on the edge of a food crisis. And when you're that close to falling off the cliff of starvation, food prices cannot be disturbed because if they are, that can trigger political conflict within countries. Rising food prices can cause riots. Food has triggered revolutions when people don't have any. Tunisian bread riots. Food instability in Sudan toppled a precedent. Still a white war? When countries rapidly have to find alternative countries for their food, import prices are higher. Grain may take longer to get there because it has to go via different routes. Transportation costs are higher, which many of these countries can't afford. Another important point. Belarus is the second largest exporter of potassic fertilizer in the entire world. Farmers across the planet it, need it because it increases crop productivity and yields so they can feed the world. Black farmers need it too, but Belarus is being sanctioned right now because of its role in Russia's war. So in turn, farmers don't get their fertilizers and their crops are drastically reduced, which raises food prices and makes poor people starve. This war equals global food insecurity. And if it spills over into NATO countries, this war equals the existence of life itself being threatened. Still a white war? I know what this is. It's fatigue, cynicism, and trauma from how we as black people have been treated historically right up to today. I get it. But this war is affecting black people right now. Unless Africans don't count to the black diaspora. Everything on this planet is connected. If you don't know how things work, learn and ask questions before you run your mouth about something you can't be bothered to understand. Who knew a white war had so many hues?